And for a warm welcome for the funny Rick James. All right, give it up for Dan Bowlight and Gina Manning. Yeah. Fun show. I don't usually talk about being a Navy veteran because I got out 15 years ago and I'm over it. But Gina brought it up. So now I feel I have to. How many people got an email blast from Gina a couple days ago that had a... Um, had a picture of a Navy ship, and it said Navy, Navy veteran Rick James before. Yeah. Two of you, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the email blast is working. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of ship that was. Like a cruiser or a destroyer or a submarine or something. I have no idea. I worked with airplanes. That's what I did 15 years ago. <laughs> well, I wanted to join the Air Force. I did. But here's what happened. I called the Air Force recruiter up, told him I'm interested. He asked me some questions. Do you have a high school diploma? Not yet. Have you ever done drugs? <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, you have no trouble with the law or anything? And I said, no, man, nothing but speeding tickets. And he said, how many speeding tickets do you have? And I said, I, I, I don't know, like 11 or 12? <laughs> <laughs> and he said that I can't join the Air Force because I have no respect for authority. And I said, it's the freaking Air Force. <laughs> About an hour later, the Navy recruiter called me up. <laughs> and he said, how many speeding tickets do you have? I don't know, like 11 to 12. He said, oh, I'll just put you down for two. <laughs> I said, you can do that? He said, shh, it'll be our secret. <laughs> And for three years, that's what I thought, don't ask, don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, I got out of the Navy 15 years ago. Started comedy 12 years ago. So it's kind of, you know, not relevant that I was in the Navy. But uh, I have done a lot of overseas tours, like they said, as a civilian. You know, I don't know a lot about the military because I was in the Navy. <laughs> We're a lot, I learned a lot about the military from doing these tours. Like way more than I learned when I was in. Here's the main thing I learned. I learned that you should never go out drinking with the Marines unless you have a death wish. <laughs> Because those guys are crazy. <laughs> I went out drinking with some Marines about six weeks ago. And I have to be honest, I am still drunk. <laughs> One guy handed me a shot and he said, drink this. I said, what is it? It's jet fuel. <laughs> It'll make you see God. Uh, where does he go? <laughs> but I also didn't want to be a pussy, so I drank it. Because when you're with the Marines, it is better to be dead than to show fear. <laughs> They're like a shark, they smell it. <laughs> Another show I did, a young Marine came up to me, and he was just staggering drunk. And he said, dude, I am so wasted right now that I can literally piss tequila. I can't believe I fell for it. <laughs> wow. 
It tasted nothing like the quinoa. It kind of tasted like Coors Light. If you guys are curious. I haven't tried it myself. It's like a home version. When I go overseas, I fly commercial, which is great because I don't pay for it. They have this rule on airplanes, I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but they limit the amount of liquid you can bring on board. You guys know that, right? Yeah, it's only three ounces or less. And a lot of people are bummed out. They're like, oh no, what are we going to do? I can't bring my shampoo or my super beagle. It's a travesty. But I'm the type of person who'll take a bad situation, and I'll flip that around. Hey, hey, how can I use this stupid rule to make my life better? How can I take advantage of this? And I thought about it for a while, and then I realized that I have a whole, whole bunch of cans of old paint and used motor oil <laughs> that I can't get rid of. <laughs> so, so I take all that crap to the airport. <laughs> What do you mean I can't bring my hazardous waste on board? <laughs> oh, you'll take it sweet. <laughs> I'm divorced. You can probably tell because I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> when I got married, I thought it worked out because I married my high school sweetheart. Oh. Oh. Yeah, she's graduating next year, so I probably should have waited for that. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> we had a large wedding because she has a huge family and a lot of friends. I don't have either. But I never realized how few friends I had until I picked my wedding party. Because she had seven bridesmaids. Yes, yeah, seven. So I had to come up with seven groomsmen to match. Because that's the rule. <laughs> I had everybody I know at my wedding party. Even my mom was a groomsman. <laughs> And I was still three people short. <laughs> I had to call Manpower Tent Pages the entire three <laughs> <laughs> I You okay, kid? There's a kid here for people in the back who don't know. She is not having fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she goes. <laughs> Things change to get married. I didn't think it would. I was like, no, nothing's going to change. Not for us. Because we're in love. <laughs> it all changed. <laughs> and I realized everything was different at Christmas time. It was shortly after we had just gotten married. And I gave my new wife list of three things that I wanted. I said I wanted an iPod, the original Star Wars trilogy, and Madden Football for the Xbox 360. Yeah, and if you tell that to your girlfriend, there's a good chance that you're gonna get at least two of those three things. But if you tell that to your wife, you're gonna get eight shirts and three pairs of pants. I was like, what the hell is this? That's not what I wanted. <laughs> he said, yeah. I decided to get you something you needed. Oh, uh, yeah. I was like, no, it's Christmas. You're supposed to give me what I want. That's the rule. You can give me what I need next month because I'll probably still need it. 
And she gave me her list. And her list was nothing but clothes. And I didn't want to get her clothes because I, I was afraid. I was afraid I'd get the wrong size or the wrong color or the pocket would be in the wrong place. So instead what I did was I got her an iPod, <laughs> the original Star Wars trilogy, and then I flipped off the Xbox 360. <laughs> And I said, yeah, I know it's not what you wanted, but you need this. <laughs> when you have a relationship end, you find yourself a lot of free time, because time that you spend with that other person is now time that you spend by yourself, just doing really stupid stuff. Like the other day, I was in my backyard, building a life-size replica of the Eiffel Tower, out of toothpicks and duct tape. <laughs> and I noticed a trail of ants that are going back and forth from a dead bug back to their home. And I was watching them for a while and I was amazed at their strength, their work ethic, their dedication. I was like, wow, these guys are awesome. But then I saw a couple of slacker ants <laughs> who were hanging out a few feet away trying to hide in the grass and get out of doing any work. <laughs> yeah, those guys. And they pissed me off because everybody else in the colony is working their ass off. So what I did was I, I went in the house and I got a pair of tweezers. And I came back outside and I picked those slacker ants up and I put them back in line and back to work with everybody else. And then I said, you know, loud enough for them to hear me, I said, I'll uh, show you guys not to slack off and everybody else is working. But then I had a horrible thought. I mean, what if they weren't slack? What if they're like on a little ant vacation? I don't know. Maybe that's where they go. Maybe the Queen Ant said, working number 4729 and 6531, you guys worked quite hard. Take the rest of the week off. So they're not slacking, they're relaxing. And I just ruined it. I messed up their entire vacation plans. Because that would suck if you're at a beach somewhere, drinking a nice cold pina colada, saying to yourself, this is great. I really needed a break. Work has been kicking my ass. And then a giant pair of tweezers comes out of the sky, picks you up, throws you back to your desk. Oh, Piss you off, right? So I wanted to find these guys, and I wanted to put them back on vacation. But I couldn't because they, they all look the same. So what I decided to do was take a couple of different ants. Because that would be cool. If you're at your desk and working really hard, and then a giant pair of tweezers comes out of the sky, and picks you up and throws you on the feet somewhere, that would be pretty awesome, right? So I picked the first guy up, and I put him on vacation. And then I picked the second guy up, and he bit me. Yeah, the little bastard bit me. I shook it off, I kind of startled myself. He did a couple flips, and he landed back in line with everybody else. And I wanted to get him, because you should never bite the hand of the guy holding the giant pair of tweezers trying to put you on vacation. <laughs> That's just bad karma. But I couldn't find him because they all looked the same. So what I did was I killed everybody. <laughs> The moral of that story, the moral, the moral of that story is, my ex-wife is a whore. <laughs> That's the moral of every story I know. <laughs> you guys are all right. <laughs> You know, I wanted to do a bunch of political jokes because 2012 is an election year. But yeah, that'd be cool, that'd be kind of relevant. But then I quickly realized that I know nothing about politics. Well, that's not true, here's what I know. I know Democrats are loose whores with no morals, and Republicans hate black people. But that's it, that's all I know about politics. 
<laughs> this is fun. <laughs> I had something interesting happen to me recently. Maybe somebody here can relate. I live in an apartment complex, and in the middle of my apartment complex there's a courtyard. And around that courtyard there are a bunch of concrete benches. You know, because it's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day I was walking by, and there was an attractive young woman sitting by herself on one of the benches. Josh. And as I walked by, Josh, and as I walked by, <laughs> what the hell is that? It's a random Josh. <laughs> no, Rick. My name's Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a comedy show where somebody just shouts out a random name. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so as I walked by the attractive young woman who was sitting by herself on the concrete benches that's in my apartment complex, she said, hey. And I stopped and I, I looked around, and I was the only one there. Not yet. She asked, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going home. I, I live right up there. It's apartment number 78. I wanted her to know in case she wanted to come by later. <laughs> she said, cool. What are you going to be doing later? I said, I don't know. Probably going to be hanging out at my house. Right up there. <laughs> apartment number 78. I'll leave the door open. <laughs> Start talking for a bit. She asked me what I do. Yeah, I'm a stand up comic. I've done shows all over the world. She goes, Wow, that's really cool. I said, Yeah, it is. <laughs> I asked her what she does. She said, No, I'm just sitting on a park bench. I said, It's great work if you can get it. <laughs> we, get, we, we continue talking, it's going really, really well. So I went to hand her a business card, you know, because I'm a professional. <laughs> and as I went to hand it to her, she said, hold on, some creepy guy's trying to give me something. And when she said that, she turned her head a little bit to kind of get a better look at me. And as she turned her head, I noticed I kind of hit in between her, like, in between her hair. Is that the piano? That's so fucking weird. <laughs> Hidden like in her hair was like a little thin black cord. Oh. Yeah, I was talking to this bitch for like eight minutes <laughs> before I realized that she wasn't even talking to me. She was just on her hands-free cell phone. <laughs> hands-free cell phones are great if you're driving a car or you're operating heavy machinery. But if you're sitting by yourself on a park bench and you're too damn lazy to lift your arm. <laughs> You're a moron. <laughs> Worse, you make me look like a moron because I'm talking back to you. <laughs> I know why people do it. People are afraid. People are afraid that maybe the radiation from their cell phone will give them brain cancer. Brain cancer is not funny, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but have you guys ever heard that? The radiation from your cell phone can give you cancer. But what do they give you if you have cancer? They give you radiation. <laughs> so I say if the radiation from your cell phone gives you brain cancer, just keep on talking. <laughs> because you have the antidote right there in your hand. <laughs> My sister told me recently that she was going to do a 3D walk for breast cancer. I said, I don't think that's how you get it. <laughs> she said, no, it's for breast cancer awareness. Like, breast cancer awareness? It's 2012. Is there anybody anywhere? who's never heard of breast cancer? <laughs> I'm sure there are lots of people who have never been affected by it. 
maybe none of their friends or their family members, or friends of their family members, or their family members' friends. Nobody in their circle has ever had breast cancer. But they should at least be aware that it exists. <laughs> because I highly doubt there's gonna be some guy driving down the street they're in the middle of the breast cancer 3D walk, and he's going to see a bunch of women walking on the sidewalk, all dressed in pink and having bras on their heads. <laughs> well, I don't think that guy's going to pull over, roll down his passenger window, and say, Hey, what's going on? Where is everybody going? <laughs> And then one of the women are going to stop what she's doing, <laughs> lean over his passenger window, and say, we're doing a breast cancer three-day walk. Breast cancer? <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be doing a walk for breast cancer awareness. You should be doing a walk for breast cancer solutions. You should be doing a walk for breast cancer cheers. Have you tried using cell phones? <laughs> I mess with my sister a lot. I actually have a twin sister. I don't know if anybody here has a twin, but if you do, you know it sucks because of all the competition. My twin sister always thought she was so much better than me just because she graduated from high school two years before I did. <laughs> <laughs> when she graduated, she had a 4.0. I had a 2.3. But that was her grade point average and my blood alcohol level. <laughs> <laughs> then after high school, she went to a major university. I went to Grossmont Community College. <laughs> for nine years. <laughs> it's embarrassing when you're in college and they stuff your best friend from high school. <laughs> I finally graduated that. Congratulations. Thank you. I have a degree in history. Oh, where's the applause now? <laughs> Which is awesome because you can do so much with a history degree. You know, like collect all the yellow pie pieces in a game of trivia pursuits. <laughs> And that's it. That's really all it's going to be. <laughs> I've always been a big history buff. You know, you can take a class in world history, European history, even Mexican history. I haven't once taken a class in Canadian history. Which was great because the whole semester only lasted half an hour. <laughs> and the final was all on Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, I was up at my sister's house. I was teasing her with something stupid. But I just think she's like, like Gina, she's a teacher. She is, she's been a teacher for like 20 plus years. But she's stupid. <laughs> so I was teasing her, and she said, Stop patronizing me. You ever heard anybody say that? Stop patronizing me? I was like, patronizing? If I was patronizing you, that would mean that I was a patron of you. <laughs> and if, if I was your customer, that, that would make you a hooker. <laughs> you mean patronizing. You're supposed to say, stop patronizing me. She said, you're doing it again. <laughs> It's a great job, it really is. I had a bunch of crappy jobs before I started comedy full time. But 
You gotta do it. Last job I had before I started comedy full time, I used to, I used to work in collections. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was an okay job, but I felt like such a hypocrite. Because I worked in collections, but I have really bad credit. <laughs> I would call people, I'm like, yeah, Mr. Johnson. I'm just calling to find out when, when we can expect that payment on your account. And be like, no, I don't know, Rick. When are you gonna pay me? <laughs> Oops, wrong number. <laughs> Sometimes you owe some money and you luck out. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes it happens. And for example, a long time ago, I had a Montgomery Wards card. Nice. And I completely maxed it out. <laughs> and then they went out of business. <laughs> I never had to pay those guys anything. <laughs> they just sent me a couple notices that I ignored. And they went, then they went away. I'm hoping MasterCard goes out of business. <laughs> Hopefully by the 18th of next month. <laughs> that coach Little League? Yeah! Those are some of my players right there. <laughs> A lot of people think it's weird that I coach Little League because I don't have any kids. Whatever. I like baseball. I don't like kids. It's fun. I think they put too much pressure on winning in the Little League. There's too much pressure. Sweep the leg, Johnny! People just want to win. So I had to draft my team. And I didn't want to draft my team based on how talented the kid was. Because I figured it's Little League. It shouldn't matter. It should be about having fun. What I did was I drafted my team strictly based on how hot the kid's mom was. <laughs> oh, it was fun, it was fun. <laughs> we had the worst team in the league. <laughs> But it, I liked it. I was, uh, <laughs> I'll do it again. Was, uh, <laughs> I went surfing today yeah, on the internet, and uh, uh, <laughs> and I saw an article that listed America's greatest novels. They had the usual suspects, like The Great Gatsby, you know, Catcher in the Rye. Huckleberry Finn. Books that belong there. But number one on the list of the greatest book of all time in Amer American literature was Moby Dick. I don't know if anybody here has ever read Moby Dick. In fact, I don't know if anybody anywhere has ever read Moby Dick. <laughs> it's 800 pages about how to be a commercial fisherman. <laughs> the damn whale's not even in it until page 780. You know, the whale that the book is named after. That would be like watching all six Rocky movies in a row. But Rocky's not in it, they refilm it. So all you see is some guy training to fight Rocky. And he's doing a bunch of jumping jacks. That's like four hours right there of the movie time. And it's four hours of the guy lacing up his gloves. And finally he gets his chance and he fights Rocky. Right at the end of, minute of movie six. And Rocky kills him. The end. <laughs> That's Moby Dick right there. You know, if Moby Dick is the greatest novel in American literature, then it's no wonder why foreigners hate us. <laughs> I have no idea how much time I'm doing. <laughs> have that been five minutes yet? <laughs> I've got, got a couple minutes. I got a couple minutes? Maybe I don't have a couple jokes. I don't know. Teasing, <laughs> teasing. I took an IQ test recently. 
<laughs> Me and this guy, we're bonding. <laughs> Probably not a good idea since it took me nine years to get to community college. <laughs> That's a good one. I got a 129. Which at first doesn't say that, it doesn't sound that bad, getting a 129. Because they say that the average is 100. But when they say the average is 100, that's out of everybody. <laughs> including people who don't know how to read. <laughs> They're just taking a test going, hips, hips, hips. That's not even a choice. So if all those guys are getting zeros, and the average is 100, that means there has to be a whole bunch of people getting 200s and balance out. Mental retardation is like 75. I get a 129. I'm closer to being retarded than I am to being smart. I told my dad about the test. I said, yeah, I took an IQ test. He says, what did you get? I said, yeah, I got a 129. He said, wow, that's a lot better than I thought you'd do. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, my name's Rick Jean, thanks.